He a stain, so I hit, then I dip. He a stain, so I hit, then I dip. He a stain, so I hit, then I dip. Bitch, paper stacking like chips. I'm cutting, I'm cutting chips. Uh, I'm cutting chips. I'm cutting chips. Uh, I'm cutting chips. Hey you guys, it's your girl Janae and I'm back with another video. I already did my eyebrows off the of camera and I'm going to take my LA Girl Pro Concealer in the color Cool Tan and I'm going to put that on my eyelid and blend it out. And after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my translucent powder by Hard Candy and I'm just going to put that all over my eyelid so that my eyeshadows won't crack in the long run. Then I'm just going to take some tape and use it as my guideline. I would advise all new beginners to use the step because then it's just going to make sure that your eyeshadows are lined out perfect even and your look is just going to look flawless. And then I'm going to go in with my Take Me to Brazil palette. Now, as a reminder, you guys, I'm going to be using this palette for this whole entire look. So, I'm taking this neon yellow color that they have, and I'm just going to go ahead and use that as my transition shade. Now, when putting on a transition shade, you always want it to be... Whatever look that you're going for, you always want it to be the lightest shade of that look. So my look is more of like a tropical sunset kind of thing, but with more tropical colors. So I decided to use the yellow as my transition color because it's going to make it pop. Now when you're putting down these transition shades, don't just pack it on with a lot of color. You want to slowly build that product up. Take your brush. You're going to be blending your eyes out for a very long time. So... Take your brush, lightly pack it on, and go in real show wiper motions. Do it slowly, and you know, pack the color on until it's to your liking. And as you can see, I'm just blending this yellow out. And I'm taking my time, and I'm making sure I'm getting everything because this color is very light. So you're going to have to build this product up. Take your time. And then I'm going to take like this dandy lion yellow that they have in this palette. And I'm going to put that right on top of that yellow transition shade. Just so that I can make that yellow pop even more. Because the yellow, that neon yellow that they was giving me was not cutting it sis. Like it was not cutting it. So I just went ahead and took this, <clears throat> this shade that was in the palette. And I go ahead and blended it right on top of it. And it just made it pop even more. Just look at it. It's so pretty. I love this yellow. I'm back into that palette. I'm taking that neon orange and I'm putting it right under my transition shade. Always remember when you go to use your second shade, go back with the first shade and blend it out and pack that color back on because you can easily lose that color that you had put down the first time. Remember, blending is key. You always want to go into windshield wiper motion and blend those colors out so it don't look like they're just lined eyeshadows. <laughs> then I'm just going to go ahead and take this burnt orange that's in that same palette. And I'm going to go right under that orange, that neon orange that we just put down. And I'm going to use this to darken up my crease. Don't worry about the fallout. It's okay. We're going to clean that up. But you just want to make sure you build that color up in your crease. Because we're going to do a cut crease. So we're going to have to make sure that color is really packed on and built. Because you want it to pop when you go to put on your other shades. But like I said before. When you put a shade down. Always go back and blend it out with the shade that you used before. That is always key to having a perfect seamless blend.
So going in from darkest to lightest, I'm taking that burnt orange, I'm packing it on and I'm blending it out. Then I'm gonna go in with that neon orange, I'm gonna pack it in and blend it out. And then I'm gonna take that neon yellow and I'm gonna pack it on and blend it out. You want everything to be seamless, you wanna see every shade that you put down right before you cut your crease because once you cut your crease and those shades are not blended down and packed on right the rest of your eye look will not go and your cut crease will be a no 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 my favorite but the hardest part of my life when it comes down to this makeup cut creases are the hardest thing to do oh my god i advise everybody to take your time and do this as slow as possible because honey let me tell you something okay i had to start eye looks over constantly because of my cut crease I found that using a smaller defined brush helps when you are trying to create your cut crease because it helps you know get all the angles and it's easier to create a cut crease using a smaller defined brush than it would be using a bigger brush. But I'm using a lipstick brush and I felt as though that was small enough and it's, it's pointy enough to where I could create my line without it being too much hassle and without it being too much problem and too much mess. So, I would say to use a small defined brush when doing a cut crease. As you can see, I'm just cleaning it up, you know, cleaning up my mistakes. It's okay. Do it before you put down your shadows. I would advise and then I'm just gonna go ahead and take that hard candy setting powder and I'm gonna set that white primer by NYX taking that neon yellow and I'm putting it in my inner eye and going in with this shadow it wasn't as pigmented as I wanted it to be so I had to spray it with some fix plus Setting spray and I went back and dabbed it into the eyeshadow again and it just made it even more pigmented and it made the color even more able to be able to you know pack on without it looking too crazy and cracking and stuff like that for God's sakes it felt like I was putting this yellow on <laughs> forever like oh my god I was so over it but I just kept pushing on through just for you guys. Just for y'all. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this neon pink right next to that neon yellow. And I'm just going to softly pat this on because you don't want to just throw this eyeshadow on. And mess up the yellow and have this pink take over the yellow so you just want to slowly pat it on and then blend it into the yellow slowly as possible don't overdo it just take your time go back in playing with those two colors To make your shades look like they're feeding into each other, you always want to go back in with the shade that you put down before to blend out the shade that you just put down. 
Now as you can see, I'm just taking that yellow and I'm blending it into the pink to make it look seamless and not to look so blocked. You want it to look like they're slowly falling into each other instead of looking so black like you just put down colors. I had to spray my brush down with some satin spray because this shadow wasn't getting as pigmented as I wanted. So I just had to go back in and pack that color on all over again. Taking that neon orange, I'm putting it right next to the pink, following right after and I'm just gonna do the same thing, same stuff supply, pack on, blend, and pack on. Taking that pink and I'm blending it right into the orange just like how I did the yellow into the pink. And I'm going to do that slowly. I don't want to, you know, like I said before, you don't want to take away from each color. Going in with this blue that I lo 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 love. Oh my god, you guys. Look at this freaking blue. Like, this blue is everything. Just everything. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take that bright purple that they have. It's like a festive purple and it is so pretty. And I'm just going to take that just to end off my eye look. This palette has like this dark purple and I went ahead and I put that right back on top of that purple because I felt like the purple that I used before, it wasn't dark enough for me. So I'm going to just take that purple and blend it right into my cupcakes. Then I'm going to take that orange just to blend out that purple and clean up my cupcakes. Okay, honey, we are like officially done with those shadows for right now, so it's just time to clean up, okay? My favorite part of every look, gotta have some glitter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my heavy metal by Urban Decay and I'm gonna put that right in between my cut crease. Look how this glitter just makes this look pop even more. Like, oh my god, I'm like really obsessed. Oh my god. On to the face, I'm taking my L'Oreal True Match in the color Classic Tan and 7. And I'm going to take my Beauty Blender, my Beauty Blender. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and pack that all over my face. You know, get it all smashy. Taking 
taking my LA Girl Pro Concealer in the color Cool Tan. I'm going to put that right in my highlight spots. I'm going to put it under my eye, um, on the bridge of my nose, on my cupid's bow, under my chin, and right on my forehead. Suck those cheeks in, honey, because it's time to contour. I'm going to take my LA Girl Concealer in the color Espresso and just follow everything that I do and your contouring skills will be on a hunt So, when you see that I'm putting this on the outer of my nose, I'm putting it under my chin, I'm putting it under my cheekbones, I'm putting it on my forehead. You want to have your contour on point, honey, and you're going to want to blend it out in circular motions. Do not go in with your wiper motions because I fit... Like, I noticed that when you go in windshield wiper motion, your contour looks so harsh. Instead of when you go into it with circular motion, it'll look more natural. And it's the beauty blender. <laughs> Taking that and I'm just going to... Go ahead and blend out that concealer because I had it sitting on my face for too long and you don't want it to sit for too long because then you're going to look real yellow mellow, honey. setting my face with my Benai Banana Powder and I'm going to put it right on top of where I put that cool tan and you don't want to put too much and you don't want to dab the powder into you want to lightly dab it because that's where you get your flashback from so just lightly dab it right into those spots I usually leave this on my face for like 2 to 3 minutes so, just leave it on for a little bit and wipe it off. <laughs> Yo, I just never get enough of you in city. And I'm going to take my Studio Pro foundation powder and I'm going to set that right into that concealer where I put my contour. The blush that I am using is by The Balm called Cabana Boy and let me tell you guys, this blush is everything I mean, like, look, got me feeling myself. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take that dark purple that I used to finish off my cut crease and I'm going to put that under my waterline with a thin fine flat brush. And then I'm going to take a small blending brush and blend out that purple with that neon pink.
I was not satisfied with this look guys. I just felt like it would not be complete if I did not put this neon green to make this look pop. And let me tell you, I was freaking right. Like, once I put this neon green, this whole look just went a whole different direction. Like, it turned into like a whole tropical theme thing going on and I'm in love. Jeans in the club, I'm the shit. I bought the bar.